Hello everyone and welcome to series 4 of Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. It's been about 10 months of real time that I've been playing on this map and about 340 hours of actual playtime. So um, yeah, I've been at this for a while. In that time, series 1, I, I was all about getting off Norvis. So I built up my, um, my base from down here with the or with metals being originally done here and then eventually just being dropped off by train. I've got a, a bus along here that's building science and ammunition and glass and doing science here and oh, green science as well and so on. All the way along here. There's red red circuits being made here until light got upgraded. Then we're making all kinds of bits and pieces of blue science in there. Um, I think this is probably all blue science here. We've got some belts and things here, batteries, all the sort of important stuff you need for a base. Uh, gradually working my way up. I'm not sure why there's a random... Oh, that's a uh, meteor protection turret. Um, all the bits and pieces you need for a growing base all the way up here. And then a couple more sciences, yellow and purple. And that's all of the um, all of the Norvian sciences, all the ones you make down on the planet being made in one place there. And then that was enough to start making, start working on rocketry. So from here on, we've got things like, well, there's tank, tank ammunition. No, artillery shells being made there. Um, nuclear power things in here. And then... Um, or nuclear, in more nuclear power there, a bit of fluid handling, armor and stuff. And then up here we start to get onto the real space-based stuff. So we've got the um, meteor defense guns, finally got them up and running to protect me from all the rocks that are falling out of the sky. And then a rocket launch pad that's, um, that's just sending up rocket stuff to, um, to, to launch satellites and get me all this juicy data that I could then carry on and use for other things making rocket parts and then we started to um, launch actual cargo rockets as well as the uh, the satellite rockets so over here we've got um, four different rocket silos for very that I'm using in various different ways this is the one that is, is set up to be autom automatically go up to my space station every so often whenever whenever it fills up it'll automatically launch and take up all of the bits and pieces that are needed and that's mostly things like um, scaffolding belts uh, space belts specifically and pipes and so on all, all the sort of the juicy stuff you need to build a space station then I've got some more over here that I this one is another automated one this one's taking up all of the um, substrates for memory cards but I'll get onto that sort of thing a bit later this one is a bit more general purpose as you can see there's lots of different things in the different boxes around it that can be loaded in here based on what demands I put in these um, acc accumulators and then these 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 rockets rockets from here I use to go off to um, other planets in order to build up mines on, on different distant planets to build all the various different resources that I'm going to need out there and I've got these receivers here that will um, receive the signals from orbit to tell me what, what supplies are needed up there. As I say, carrying on up here, this is building all the stuff that needs to be taken up into orbit. And then here, this is, this is now a bit outdated, but this is where I had row, row, a huge row of delivery cannons. And these would take in the resources that were needed elsewhere in the solar system, <clears throat> put them into one of these little green capsule things, and then using a massive railgun, that's these things, would fire them off into space at the other planet where they were needed and they'd fall into a chest like this and then they'd be then they could be unloaded onto belts and, and passed around whatever was needed up there. And finally we've got a system at the top here that's making the all the modules, at least up to tier three. And those are being used in massive quantities because it just makes things a bit you can put in you can chuck in a load of speed modules in, in a um, in a beacon and then some maybe some efficiency modules as well and just make things run much more smoothly and efficiently. And that's that's as far as the main bus on Norvis went. At that point, it was things I didn't really need it quite so much anymore. But on the on the way to getting to that point, there were a number of things that I moved off the bus. So the, one of the first ones, as always, was um, was was smelting. Uh, so well, actually, the first thing was that was mining that got moved off. So I had mines scattered all around the base. There's still a few of them left, but lots of I've been sort of shifting them around as I as I need more more and more resources. So this one, for example, this or this iron ore mine here completely exhausted this copper mine completely exhausted so I should probably go out and pick those up at some point but there are enough over here on the other side like this copper mine here that's running quite happily and is completely full and there are some iron mines down here as well so this is generally working then I moved smelting off the bus so we've got here we've got massive smelting arrays we've got trains bringing in the ore pumping it through all these furnaces and then on the other side it's pumping out the plates so that makes sure I've got enough iron and all, all of the metals and the bricks and things um, available to me and this again is a bit outdated now this is using the old style of uh, smelting where you just chuck the ore into a furnace to cook it and call it good enough um, but it it works and I've left it in here as an emergency backup there's quite a lot of sort of, of um, ore left in here so if the other 
better smelting facility fails for whatever reason. There's some left in here. Then I started moving circuit production off. So we've got green circuits here, all the ingredients being brought in by train, and then the green circuits being taken away by train. Over on the other side of the base, because of poor organisational skills, I've got the same sort of thing for red circuits. Um, here there appears to be a bit more of a... Sh well, there's been a bit of a shortage of plastic by the looks of it. So that, But that is now filtering in and is going to go round the, round the system here, be made into red circuits, which will then be passed down and go into a train here. Um, we've still got 285,000 in here, so that shortage of plastic hasn't really caused any serious problems. These boxes are all nearly full, and we're looking at sort of about 40 out of 48. So that's that's pretty close to full. Um, and then next to it, we've got blue circuit production. Um, this has mostly is mostly n no longer in use, um, although it is still building, which is a bit weird. Um, but I think it's just it's just sort of building up a bit of a backlog here because we're not using this anymore because I've moved moved that off again to somewhere else. So this is just for blue circuits that are required here on Norvis. I then um, oh what was the next thing I did? I think that was it. That was it. Basically it for series one. That was as far as I got. Um, series one ended pretty much when I started launching the uh, the rockets from here and, and I got properly into space. Series two. Well, I don't know how well I can show this off really because series two was all about what was going on in the space station and building up the first level of. Um, of, of space sciences but I've pulled all of that up that was over here and un unusually I don't usually bother um, but I had going out this way I had all of the space science tier ones um, and that as you can see on this on these diagrams <laughs> took in a fair amount of resources lots of different things mixed them all together in various ways and pretty spat out space science and I'll see if I can dig up some old video footage of, of this system actually working but essentially we had the four sub factories and down a sort of a basic basic sort of main bus type system and that was building up, the as I say, the first four space sciences. And to get those, that required me to go off to lots of other planets. So firstly, I went off to Miokin. I set up, out here, I set up um, a power supply with all these uh, solar panels. Um, and a vulcanite mine here to get vulcanite in at a, at a slightly higher rate. And which we crushed and washed and processed and passed down to a delivery cannon down here that would fire it back out again. And then I decided that it was a bit too much of an effort to do to do the vol to work with vulcanite on on Miokin because there's no water supply here, so power was forever a difficulty. And so this base has been pretty much abandoned, and that's why there's lots of bits and pieces that are damaged or destroyed. There's holes in the um, in the power grid over here. There's holes in the belts and everything, and it's just it's just been completely abandoned. I've I've stopped using this one. Um, where else did I go? What was what was the second place I went? I think the second place was probably Frost. Um, here I was a bit more organised. This 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 planet has water, so I set up nuclear power, um, and there was a convenient uranium patch here. So I'm digging up digging up uranium here and processing it. So this is going to keep it going forever. Um, uranium. A, re a relatively small uranium patch goes an incredibly long way, especially once you've got the Covarex enrichment going. So this is this is absolutely fine. This will just keep running merrily for basically forever. And originally I started off building up the systems you can see here. I had a mine up here that's digging up the beryllium and another one up here that's digging up cryonite. Those are being fed in down here and over here we had we we're processing the beryllium ore into beryllium ingots. Um, along here we were processing coal into the oils and things in order to make um, all the bits and pieces you need in order to make the delivery cannon capsules because again I was using delivery cannons back in those days and that had a feed of the um, beryllium ingots coming up here and they were being lobbed off by delivery cannon and that worked quite well at the time. On the other side I had cryonite being brought in it was being crushed and processed and mixed and stuffed and then put into another and then that was being used to freeze water um, into, into ice and that was being sent off with the delivery cannon as well because I needed I needed that and I had a third delivery cannon up here for the cryonite so all of this was working quite nicely bringing out you know the small the small quantities that were needed by my fledgling little base up in up in orbit that was gradually producing all of the uh, the little bits and pieces I needed for the for the tier one space sciences then was Henke Seswi, um over here same story again we've got the same system building up the um, delivery cannon capsules a similar processing facility making the uh, Holmanite, um, Holmanite ingots, and, and again firing them off by delivery cannon. And then there was tulip. Tulip is very similar once again. You, you you may be sensing a bit of a theme here. So down here again, 
this is exactly the same. It's upside down this time, but it was exactly the same principle: making the deli making the, um, delivery cannon capsules and making um, bio no uh, vita melange to send out by the delivery cannon. I was a bit more organised here, and I had a, had a full train system set up and running. And this is this is um, and I got actually got a full LTN set up. So as it, as I went through each of these planets, I was, my, my my systems were getting better and better. So Myokin was terrible. It was just a tiny little feed going into a, a a mine feeding into a small processing facility and directly into a, a delivery cannon that where i was supplying the delivery cannon capsules by rocket and there's still loads of them out there frost was slightly better i was still using belts but i had i was actually building the delivery cannon capsules there and Cassesui, i had my first rail system uh, um, off planet and then um tulip i've got the i've got an actual better i've got a better rail system it's all set up it's all much more neatly organized and just just works nicely then I went off to Kothar for the Iridium, and again, exactly the same sort of principles. We're um, along here. We're processing oil, making making the delivery cannon capsules, processing Iridium, and firing that off. And that was pretty much it. That that allowed me to get the um, the tier one astro science, uh, sorry, tier one space sciences, all four of them done in this area over here and scienced up. And that tier one space science, that was series two. Now we get onto series three, and that's the new and exciting part. All the all the um, the really new, shiny stuff. And that started off with me basically deciding that my um, the way I was doing science up here it was, it was too slow. There was there was there was too much constriction on all of the throughput because there was just essentially half a belt of each of each product being passed up and down the the main bus, and it just, and it was all too crammed in, and there wasn't really room for expansion. So I decided. Rip it all up, throw it all, recycle it all, to, and um, and go off and do something different. So after a bit of experimentation, I came up with this system, where I've got an array of land, uh, rocket landing pads, and each rocket will bring in whatever whatever material is required by that um, landing pad. In here, in this case, you can see it's the um, the substrates for the memory cards, and the, and each one has its own different different resource it brings in, and its own separate station. So the trains will will trundle through quite happily and pick up whatever resource is needed. Those then get taken away to external facilities by the trains where they'll be made typically into, into science. So up here for example we've got energy science, we've got a drop-off station here where six different products get dropped off. They get passed along these belts. We, we use all of these machines to make them make, make the, the various science um, parts that are needed. Um, and eventually we get to the computers, which are producing the actual science catalogs, and then we've got on, to, and then then there's tier two, which is the same sort of thing again, but generally a bit harder. So up here we've got energy science two being made, and computers at the top producing the catalogs, and you can see that from the flashy lights on them, they're running. We're not producing some of the science quite quickly enough, but they are generally running. And so I've got one there for energy. I've got another one down here for astro science, and astro science I've actually brought all the way up to tier three, so that's going gone a little bit further. Uh, here we've got material science, which, and uh, and over here we've got bioscience. So we've got the four main sciences: one, two, three, four, and also rocket science in here, which is a little one you have to make. Which, this is sort of the your starter space science. Um, it's it's easier than all the rest. It just just requires a few inputs and not not a huge amount of processing. But again, I've got it in its own little area to do that. I've also got this spike up here where we're making some of the input, so, so, so some of the intermediate things, like uh, these mirrors are required for in in multiple places. So I thought I'll just have one place building them and supplying them. And then up here I've got the busiest part of the factory. <laughs> this is where the memory card substrates are turned into actual proper memory cards by combining them with uh, red circuits and lots and lots of copper. And this is this is sort of the bane of my life at the moment. There's it's just not producing the cars fast enough, fast enough for the rate they're getting churned through, but at in the rest of the factory. But it, it's trying. Maybe at some point I'll come out and expand this. Um, people have suggested putting in some more landing pads that are specifically for this area, and yeah, maybe I will. Maybe I will. We'll see how it goes. And we're also producing some um, acid and cryonite slush up here as well. Once all the science catalogues get produced. They're then taken from these five areas um, over to here. This this area actually makes the actual science itself. And the reason that's done separately is because there's a number of steps in making science. You need to bring in the catalogues and you then turn them into significant data. Uh, no, you don't. You turn them into insights in these machines, but you still need the catalogues later on. So I didn't, so I didn't want to do that extra step off site. 
these insights are then passed over to here where these machines turn them into significant data the gold memory cards and then all of your science machines take in in this case it takes in um, the catalog for this tier of science it takes in the significant data and it takes in an insight of the appropriate color so the catalog is specific to this particular science you see there's there's four lines along it only one is lit up that means it's tier one if i look over here this one's got two lines lit up so it's tier two so the catalogs are specific to this very this particular tier of science so we're, we're making tier one energy science here so it's tier one catalogs the purple insights are specific to energy science in general so all of the energy sciences use those so it's the same ones there as it is there and then the significant data is common across all of the sciences so we use the same significant data on energy science astro science biological science and material science each one also requires an exotic material in this case it's holmium plates so for tier one it's holmium plates for tier two it's holmium wires for tier three it'll be holmium bananas or something i can't remember for tier four it'll be um i don't know holmium the uh, fish i don't know <laughs> yeah something completely different anyway so each stage gets gradually slightly more and more complicated. You also need to feed in tier one sciences into the tier two uh, machine in order to, to uh, pass, and they get passed through. And I'm not quite sure how, not quite sure how they're getting grabbed from. Ah, oh, that's interesting. They're getting grabbed on this side in this particular case. Okay, so you also need the tier one space sciences to make the tier two space sciences. And that, again, is common across all of them. And so I've got four of these systems and they all work in the same way we've got astro energy material and bio and so all of this is actually essentially identical <clears throat> except for the slight differences in the exotic materials they take in those are all then getting fed down into here where this is my um supremely elegant uh, su sushi system for the uh, for the science packs and so as you can hopefully see what's happening here is all of the science packs are getting fed in along along the inputs here and there are some empty belts that these are there for future expansion of extra types of space science basically uh, they'll all get fed in and in for each one of these i've then got a chest which stores up to th well at least 30 of the science pack if there's less than 30 then this this inserter here will put more in just to keep it at that level they're then passed onto this belt here they go around and then they come back again and they're put back into the chest so there's always plenty of buff there's plenty of buffer space in the chest and there's plenty of spare on this belt going out that way that can be produced if needed they're all then fed down these belts we get these lovely colorful thing belts along here where they're all separate separated out then we get to these um splitters which will combine them so here we're getting as you can see we're getting the um let's look at this one because this is a better example uh we're getting the blue and green on the top and gray and red on the bottom then up here they're getting mixed further so you're getting even more colors in the, on each belt and then finally they're all put onto the same single belt and then they're passed around here and that means these inserters can just grab whatever the uh, the science labs need as they go past and as you see there, every so often they'll grab one, shove it in, because I've got some, art, uh, some uh, research running at the moment, so we're getting through a little bit of science. But this this system ensures that with just a single belt loading all of the, um, running around in front of the, the um, machines, I can feed in, well, I could feed in up to 32 different um, science packs, except I've got a uh, splitter missing in here, because I don't actually need 32, I only need 27 uh, for end game. Uh, but in theory, this could be expanded out to 32 with with only minor changes. And I mean, you, you could go out further, but the, the higher you go, the fewer of each individual type of science pack you get on the on the belt. So eventually, you'll start to run into throughput problems. Uh, one of my viewers did did the maths on this, and he worked out that I could fit um, 16 of these machines on this single belt before I start to run into throughput problems. I could also run another belt off here to get it up to 32 and I could actually take this one and this one run them to another splitter and take another two belts off there so I could actually run 64 um, science labs off this um, that seems a little unnecessary at the moment although that said science is being done um, science, science is, if science is being produced faster than it's being used at the moment as long as I keep switching between actually that's not quite true this material science one belt is um, backup is getting shorter and shorter so eventually if I keep doing material one based science I'm going to run out um, and at that point I'll need to research something else but nice happily unlike in um, vanilla factorio lots of the different late later things on 
don't require all of the science packs. I mean, there are some that do. This one takes all of the tier ones, as you can see there. But this one only takes tier two of um, uh, material science. This one takes uh, tier three of astro and tier three of material, but not bio, but not bio or energy. Uh, this one takes lots of different energies, but no, none of the others. So you can you can mix and match based on what science packs you have available, and uh, and just always keep the research going, I guess. So that's quite nice. One thing I have noticed is that the four researchers all have different flavors. There's, they they work in, in in different ways, and you sort of have a, diff a different feel from each one. So material science is the most obvious. This one produces absolutely phenomenal phenomenal quantities of scrap uh, for example the worst worst offender is this one down here the uh, where you it takes in actual taxi takes in actual locomotives uh, smashes them into a girder I believe and then produces 1500 pieces of scrap and admittedly 25 um, pieces of uh, science cards as well but 1500 data so uh, sorry 1500 scrap uh, this one produces scrap as well they all produce lots and lots of scrap and all of that gets fed up into my recycling train here um, and then taken off to be dealt with elsewhere. The Astro Science. This has lots and lots of telescopes, and this is this one is mo the most. The main challenge on this one is throughput because you have so many different things that all require these um, uh, exposure frames. You pass into a telescope, and you pass into a an an, anal an, anal an analyzing machine down here, um, and it's. And these take several of the um, of the exposed frames in order to make one data. So you get quite a lot of you get a, a very large quantity of throughput. So that's the main thing this one's testing you on. Biological is there's lots of looping going on in here and sort of by, and byproducts and things that have to pass around and recycle. So you've got you've got the loop in here where you have to produce the um, you have to produce the these things, the bio samples, in order to produce the bio sludge, but you need the bio sludge in order to make the nutrient gel, in order to make the nutrient pots, in order to make the other nutrient, the bio pots, in order to make the uh, the bio samples. So you've got that loop in there that you need to sort of, you need to keep, you need to keep things balanced and make sure you're producing things and and recycling things at the right rates. Otherwise, you start to run into problems with that. Energy science. Um, I'm not quite sure what the challenge is here. I've not played with energy science for a while, so I've sort of forgotten. But I think it's mostly around um, energy consumption. There's, um, it's, it's quite hungry compared to a lot of the others. So I've put in, I think I put in some, uh, yeah, some efficiency modules in the machines along here just to make them uh, a little bit more feasible. These, these things, for example, use massive, massive quantities of energy. This was using 20 megawatts, even though I've knocked it down by 80%. So you can see, yeah, they're, they're, they're kind of hungry on the, on the old power front. The final piece of um, infrastructure up here that I've got is down here. This is the recycling station where all of that recycling, all that scrap I mentioned earlier, gets taken in, dumped off into these tanks and these and these boxes, and then passed around this facility where it gets it gets turned into useful stuff like um, stone and iron and copper, which then gets taken off back. At, the trains pick it up from here and we'll take it back off into the into the rest of the uh, station to be used. So the other half I talked about this. Um, rocket landing area earlier the other half of this is down on Norvis um, over here where I've got an array of rocket launch pads and these take in all of the different they've got trains here dropping off all of the different resources well lots of the different resources we need in space so we've got rocket parts here to make the rockets we've got coal because we get through loads of that turning it into the oils we've got iron we've got copper we've got steel green red circuits um, plastic concrete, low density structures, uranium, sulfur and a spare one up here. And they're all getting loaded into rockets which can then be fired off into into at, at the space station when it need when it needs more of whatever it is we're running out of. And in order to get those sort of supplies up and running, um, one of the things I did was I've got a vulcanite rockets dropping off dropping off vulcanite here and that's allowed me to get this uh, smelting system up and running. Um, and this is much this is a much more efficient system than the one I had before. It takes in vulcanite and ore, and produce and and I've got massive quantities of um, productivity modules here. So the vulcanite, you, this recipe gets you a 50% boost uh, over the normal system anyway, and then I've got another 20% boost from the uh, from the productivity modules I've put in here. So we're getting, a pro I don't know if it's additive or multiplicative. Um, must be multiplicative actually. So I'm getting something like more like. Um, 
75, almost 75 percent extra um, uh, uh, metal out from the amount of ore I'm putting in. So that's making things a lot more efficient here, which is a good thing because I was getting through massive quantities of, uh, of ore in order to keep everything uh, everything running. And you can see down here the the, uh, the steel one isn't running quite as efficient quickly as the uh, the others. I think it's because yeah these aren't moduled up properly, so there's a bit of an oversight in my design there. But never mind. Um, and I've got a couple of extra outposts down here. We've got this one here making uh, low density structures that get, again, as usual, get picked up by a train. It has stopped for some reason. It's probably run out of glass. Oh, no, it's run out of plastic. That's something I'm going to have to have a look at. And then down here, we're making concrete in a in a similar sort of way. And you can generally tell when it's one of my um, new sis new setups because I've, I've got the beacons in here, just making things a bit a bit more power efficient and and allowing me to pack these full of uh, productivity modules to make them more input inefficient. Sorry, input efficient, without um, it running horrendously slowly. So yes, that's basically it for Norvis. And I've, yes, I've built walls around the outside. I've expanded gradually out. I've, made, I've, I've, I've claimed some mines and that sort of thing. But you don't care about any of that. You want to see what I've been doing on the other planets, as I sort of hinted at earlier. So let's take... Frost was a fairly early one that I did. So this one I is, isn't one of the best ones. But I've got now I've got down here, I've got a cryonite mine. I've got a beryllium mine. They're nice and full. And now I've got much bigger processing facilities. Look at this. this. This huge area is all for processing the beryllium. And that means I've got a decent supply of it going in. This, and, it's making, and this rocket is now completely full. So it's ready to go. And as well as that, we've got rockets that are making the that are filling up with cryonite and with ice. And actually with glass as well, eventually. Because that's being made because we produce stone as a side product. So in order to get rid of it, crushing it down into sand, turning it into a, a glass, and then shipping that out. And this to be honest, there's barely enough of that coming from these, the, all these places. And then on other planets, let's take a look at... Um, have I done... Yeah, I must have done Kothar. No, let's not look at Kothar. It is a silly place. Let's look at uh, Tulip, because that was the most recent one I did. So that's possibly the neatest. Because uh, each time I each time I set up a new one of these facilities, I get I'm, I, I learn from the mistakes I made the previous time. Actually, this is, this is a boring one because it's too small. Let's look at Henkis Eswe. Right. Third time lucky. So here on Henkis Eswe, we've got we've got the rail system that I uh, set up that I've, I've sort of mentioned before, and I've, I've, I expanded that out a little bit when I came back out here. So this was the original base. As you can see, we've got trains dropping off all of the resources we needed to make the uh, delivery cannons and to process the um, the holmium on this planet, holmium. And then over here, I've got a significantly upgraded version of this. So here we're bringing in the holmium or holmium ore like along here uh, right at the bottom right at the bottom here where it's getting it's getting crushed and then it's getting washed we're getting getting this stuff out it's passed along here into here where we do some sort of processing thing with it there's lots of pass through around here it just gets passed round and round and round but you know it's not not particularly exciting and then up here the the powder stuff gets stamped down into ingots passed out along here and up to the rocket we needed a little bit of extra processing here to make these beads that are used in the in the during the processing of it so that requires the uh, the vulcanite and the copper uh, plastic sorry um so those those come in by by rocket why do they come in by rocket too there are some landing pads somewhere for this but i don't know where oh there there we go here's this is where the vulcanite is coming in and just oh okay i'm being fed up here for you to use yeah, in various processing steps, and also down here to go into, into that, as I was saying. Uh, we've then got a load of um, oil processing along here to make the plastic that was needed, and to make the fuel that's needed to fuel the rockets, and the sulfuric acids being made down here. And one of the big byproducts of this, if we zoom in a bit here, you can see that we're producing sand in as part of this um, production. And that gets passed off down here, and the stone from this part of the production gets passed off again down here, where we once again, crush it and smelt it and make it into make it into glass, and that again gets fed up here and up at the top. There are rockets ready to take it away. So we've got the holmium going out in this rocket, we've got the glass going out in this one. Now the other thing we're doing up here is making circuits. So we've got green circuits, red circuits, and we're making blue circuits here because there's an alternative recipe for holmium uh, for blue circuits that uses holmium and then uses only about half the amount of everything else. So it's it's significantly cheaper. Uh, so I've got that running here. It's, it's stalled for reasons that I've gone into in previous episodes um, and need to fix at some point in the future. But that again gets fed up into this rocket where it'll eventually get taken off to where it's needed. 
So that's pretty much where I've got to now. We've got the science being done up here. We've got all of the resources being brought in by rocket. The science is, as you can see, is running, it's ticking over, it's happy. And so I thought that um, <clears throat> since I, I got up to a decent number of episodes of Series 3, and so there are a couple of reasons why I thought that was a good point to stop. One is because I've got Tier 2 of all of the sciences nearly finished. I just need to tiny, find a bit, tiny bit of tidying up up here, but basically finished. And also, I've started work on my first spaceship over here. So this is something you get from the uh, third tier of the Astro Sciences. You get to start building spaceships. And this one is probably far too small, and I'm, I'm going to need something much, much bigger to do anything at all remotely useful with it. But I thought, let's just start putting a few things together, see what I can do with it. So that's so that is going to that's the, that's a start, and that is going to be what makes Series Four Series Four. There's going to be spaceships in it. So. I hope you're all looking forward to seeing a bit more about the spaceships. I shall um, maybe talk about that a bit in the first ep in, in episode one. We'll see how it goes. Um, and yeah, so this is this is series four. It's uh, it's a big. It's not going to be a huge change from series three. It's just, it's going to be more of the same, but bigger and better with with tier three and tier four sciences coming off these uh, off the ends of these lines, and with spaceships flying around to do. Well, who knows? Uh, the, 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 I'd say the sky's the limit. The sky is not even the limit. Spaceships can go far beyond that. We'll see what I can do with them. So I think it's going to be an exciting uh, next series. I hope you're all going to come along and join me for that. There are, of course, plenty of other things to see on my channel. Um, I, I, I stream Factorio Space Exploration every Wednesday at um, 7.30 UK time, although there's I'm going to be missing one at the end of July because I'll be on holiday. But in general, <laughs> I stream every, um, every, every Wednesday night. I, uh, I also stream um, Factorio Industrial Revolution on Monday nights uh, with some friends. That's going... well, it's going. Um, I feel like I spent most of the last se session running around shooting biters because we're just... We're, we're fighting fires a bit. We're struggling with the biter, biters at the moment because there's so many of them and they're just... We keep having to go out and, and fight them manually and then run... and then, oh no, a biter's got into the base, we need to go and deal with that and it's just it's just never ending. Um, so that's a little bit frustrating, but we'll 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 deal with it in time. I'm, I'm sure. Uh, the other thing, what else have I been doing? Yeah, the other the other big things we've got is the uh, the GTA videos. Those are going up twice a week as well. Uh, that's um, we we're, we're playing a game called um, Manhunt or variations on it, uh, like Manhunt Checkpoint or Manhunt Landmark, where one of us, usually me, plays as a prey, and they have to they have to get around the map and capture all of the checkpoints that are dotted around without being caught and sh and um, rammed off the road and shot by the hunters. Now to make it a bit harder we don't have any maps on uh, so they have to use other clues like um, who's closest to the checkpoint and looking out for cars that are driving badly um, or don't look like it or don't react like an AI when they get nudged. So that's a lot of fun it's very tense and I, I strongly recommend it. Um, please do come along and watch those videos I don't think they're getting anything like as much attention as they deserve. And there are other bits and pieces going up from time to time. I need to do some more DIY videos because um, that's, that's good fun. And maybe even some more cycling ones. We'll see how it goes. So, I hope to see you um, back for the next video and in lots of the other ones as well. Uh, do join in on the streams. That's good. That's good. It's, it's always nice to have people commenting and uh, giving me ideas and criticism and pointing out when I've forgotten not really obvious things. So, I hope to see you on all of those. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.